everyone. Some of you may not know me. My name is Patricia. Arabelle is my first cousin once removed. Maybe she's my second cousin once removed. <laughs> well, if my mom's Arabelle's great aunt, then Arabelle and I can be great cousins. Arabelle's mom, Jackie, and I are first cousins because Arabelle's grandma, Jean, and my mom are sisters. Thank you all for being here to celebrate the life of Arabelle Rose and share the grief of her passing. Arabelle's family is so grateful for all of the prayers, calls, messages, kind words, and memories people have shared over the past 11 days. I'd like to open with a verse from Psalms and a prayer. You light a lamp for me. The Lord, my God, lights up my darkness. Psalms 18:28. Dear Lord, during our darkest hour, you can bring hope and healing. I pray that for Kyle, Jackie, and Westall, who have lost their daughter, Arabelle, and for Arabelle's baby, Westall, who lost his big sister. Please shine your light as we honor and remember sweet Arabelle, who is now in your arms. Please remove any fog from our minds and from our hearts and help us to trust you are still good sovereign, and that you care. You bring hope to troubled hearts. Please cast out any of our fears or worries. Amen. The stars lean down to kiss you, and I lie awake and miss you. Pour me a heavy dose of atmosphere. Cause I'll doze off safe and soundly But I'll miss your arms around me I'd send a postcard to you dear Cause I wish you were here
I don't have the pamphlet. I don't have a copy. I'm going to start with um, a poem Jackie asked me to read. A child of mine, I will lend you for a little time, a child of mine, he said, for you to love while, she's, while she lives and more, mourn, when, mourn for when she's dead. It may be six or seven years or 22 or three, but will you, till I call her back, take care of her for me? She'll bring her charms and gladden you. And should her, st should her stay be brief, you'll have her lovely memories as a solace for your grief. I cannot promise she will stay since all from earth return. But there are lessons taught down there I want this child to learn. I've looked the wide world over and searched for teachers true. And from the thrones that crowds life's lanes, I have selected you. Now will you give her all your love, nor think the, la think the labor vain, nor hate me when I come to take her home again. I fancied that I heard them say, Dear Lord, thy will be done for all the joys thy child shall bring, the risk of grief will run. We'll shelter her with tenderness, we'll love her well we may, and for the happiness we've known forever grateful stay. But should the angels call for her much sooner than we've planned, we'll brave the bitter grief that comes and try to understand. When Jackie asked if I would deliver the eulogy for Arabelle's service, I was greatly honored. Arabelle was Kyle and Jackie's trick baby. <laughs> Jackie's only request to her little baby girl about the date that she could or couldn't be born on, if I remember correctly, was that she not be born on May 21st. <laughs> so obviously, Arabelle had her fun and happy personality from the start making her arrival May 21st, 2013, at 4.41 a.m. Although Jackie may not have been impressed with the May 21st birth date, <laughs> Arabelle's Uncle Randy and I, we were. We had another birthday buddy. To some, it may not be a big deal, but for us, such a special day that was. Jackie will tell you how Arabelle was the perfect baby, the kind of perfect, all parents dream of. Such an easy baby. That's that trick baby I referred to earlier. Arabelle loved to have stories read to her from a very young age. Jackie was reading to Arabelle while she was still using a bottle. This, I'm sure, led to her love for reading. Seven years old and ready for chapter books. Such a bright girl. Arabelle was growing up into a beautiful young girl. She was taking her learning to be independent to the next level, just being independent. The things she once was needing help with were now able to be done all on her own. Arabelle was enjoying the second grade. Before school would start in the mornings, Arabelle would get up and enjoy her breakfast. She would brush her hair all by herself. And for a young girl Arabelle's age, that is a huge deal, especially with the thick, long hair that she had. <laughs> Arabelle would get dressed for the day and tackle her homework. Just get it done, she would say. 
Arabelle liked to have Ancient Aliens and Bob Ross on for background noise while doing her homework. Westall would sit with Arabelle while she did her work and was ready to help when she needed. But Arabelle didn't need too much help with her schooling. When she did, Arabelle would ask things like, where is the apostrophe on the keyboard? <laughs> Such a smart young girl. Arabelle loved to learn new things. This summer, Arabelle went to Grandma Jean's for a couple days. Well, a couple days turned into five weeks. <laughs> Jean was so happy she was able to make memories for Arabelle and to have her grandma. Uh, for uh, Memories for Arabelle to have of her and her grandma. Grandma Jean taught Arabelle how to sew, knit, bake, and garden. Arabelle loved learning to sew so much she was hinting hard for Jackie to give her Jackie's sewing machine. What a special five weeks that was for both Arabelle and my Aunt Jean. Jackie shared with me that this year the only candy, Halloween candy Arabelle asked for was candy corn. So although it's not my favorite, I will every year on Halloween eat a piece of candy corn just for Arabelle. Arabelle was working up the courage to pierce her ears and she was starting to enjoy hot tea with Jackie. Seven-year-old Arabelle was an amazing big sister to her baby Westall. Arabelle loved her baby, baby brother. Although baby Westall would get a little rough and wild compared to Arabelle's likes, she would try her hardest to rough it out. Oh. Arabelle Rose. Smart, happy, creative, caring, such a beautiful soul. I know for a fact, 100%, that every single person who had the pleasure of meeting Arabelle can tell you a story, big or small, of how she touched their heart and made them smile. She left a sparkling trail of happiness everywhere she went. <laughs> what do you think, Music Hall? Jake's right. A good song can really wrap people up in a mood better than any words alone could. Actually, I've been working on a new song myself. It's about a really specific feeling that's hard to describe. Would you like to hear it? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> So now that we've talked about how Arabelle's touched everybody, I'd like to share a little story about how Arabelle touched my heart and helped me many weeks before she was even born. 
In March of 2013, my husband and I found out we were finally expecting after many, many months of no success. Of course, as soon as we learned, we shared the news. My mother-in-law bought my mother-in-law bought me this quilting kit so I could make a quilt for our baby. Unfortunately, at around ninth, the ninth week, we miscarried. Something I couldn't understand or make sense of. I was mad at the world. A few weeks later, while trying to plan our family gift for Jackie's baby shower for Arabelle, I had a lot of soul searching to do. A gift for a baby was not really something I had wanted to think about. After a lot of thought, I decided I was going to make the quilt. Not for my baby, but for the newest baby in our family, baby Arabelle. I had tears and so many emotions as I started this project, but by the time I was a couple hours into the quilt, maybe a bottle of wine, I was happy and so excited to be able to gift this quilt to baby Arabelle. All of the negatives, all of the what ifs, the why nots, the misunderstandings nearly faded away. I was able to be happy and look forward to whatever was coming next. I was able to find joy and peace. Arabelle touched my life in a way that was invisible. Such a small miracle can make a huge impact on so many lives. Arabelle didn't stop there. She did it again when she decided to arrive a short time later on May 21st. Truly an angel, even before she was born. My sister Polly Ann desperately wanted to, but just couldn't be here today. She sends her love to you, Jackie, Kyle, and Westall, and all of your families. Polly has a little quote that she likes to use, and recently it's been making her think of Arabelle. So she rewrote the quote, and I will recite it for her. Arabelle Rose lives in a house of stars. She has a cloud for a pillow and a comet for a car. Her smile is the sunshine, sunrise. She cries a rainbow when you're hurt. She'll dance across the sky tonight, then shake the stardust from her skirt. <laughs> Arabelle was taken from this earth much too soon. While her time here with us may have been cut short, she definitely spread her sunshine. Arabelle loved everything and everyone. She found joy in literally everything around her. Arabelle truly was a walking sunshine. Arabelle had a positive impact on so many people's lives. I know she is continuing to shine down on us and is doing so right now. Arabelle would want all of us to remember her happiness, her love, her dancing spirit of purity. She absolutely loved life and would want each and every one of us to love and find joy in all that we do. I'm going to read another poem. Dirge Without Music. I am not resigned to the shuddering away of loving hearts in the hard ground. So it is, and so it will be, for so it has been, time out of mind. Into the darkness they go, the wise and the lovely. Crowded with lilies and with laurel they go, but I am not resigned. Lovers and thinkers, into the earth with you. Be one with the dull, the discriminate, discriminate dust. A fragment of what you felt, of what you knew. A formula, a phrase remains. But the best is love, best is lost. The answer is quick and keen. The honest look, the last laughter, the love. They are gone. They are gone to feed the roses, elegant and curled in the blossom. Fragrant is the blossom, I know, but I do not approve. More precious was the light in your eyes than all the roses in the world. 
Down, down, down into the darkness of the grave. Gently they go, the beautiful, the tender, the kind. Quietly they go, the intelligent, the witty, the brave. I knew, I know, but I do not approve. And I am not resigned. I'd like to close with a verse from Matthew followed by a prayer. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. Lord, please comfort my cousin Jackie and her family, who is hurting right now because of the loss of their beautiful daughter, Arabelle. Would you give them peace today as they navigate through a season that they thought would look differently? Amen. You are my sunshine. My only sunshine You make me happy When skies are gray You'll never know, dear How much I love you Please don't take my sunshine away The other night, dear As I lay asleep Does anybody have anything they'd like to come say about Arabelle or tell a story? Uh. services here today. Um, I'll leave you alone for a moment if you want some, uh, some more time before you leave. a lot of faces here I don't know um, I am Westall's brother's fiance and we just moved here from Washington and less than a year ago and um, Aaron came out here first um, to kind of pave the way while I wrapped up things in Washington and he was really missing our daughter who's a little bit older than Arabelle so to stay with mom and dad and and have Arabelle running around uh, just lightened his heart and gave him so much comfort. And then we got out here and we were really excited for our kids to have a little cousin to play with. And one night she was spending the night at our house and the next day I was gonna take all the kids out to a movie. And Arabelle pitched a fit, <laughs> crying, obstinate, the whole deal. And we were a little taken aback, we're like, it took a little while to calm her down. But then we asked her, Arabelle, why don't you want to go to the movie? And she said, you have to be really quiet in a movie theater. And it's hard for me to sit still for so long. <laughs> and I looked at each other like, that's a really good reason. <laughs> and we were so impressed by her self-awareness. <laughs> for such a young age, she was so bright. And I have no doubt if she had grown up, she would have taken this world by storm. And I so would have loved to see that. Oh. Uh, she was so unique and so special and unforgettable. Thank you. 
and she will be so missed. I'm Joe. I'm Jackie's brother. I don't really know what much to say, but she just had an energy about her, you know? You could be in the grocery line and she'd just turn to the person next and just be like, hi, I'm Arabel. <laughs> just look at my toy, you know? <laughs> just involve everyone in her world and she welcomed them. But yeah, this year for me has kind of been like a cautionary tale. I don't know. We heard Arabelle was coming and we set up this huge area by the house with a swimming pool and hot tub and tiki torches. Because with this year being the way it was, we thought it might be her last year to have memories of us. We thought we might be the ones who she might, you know, who she'd be leaving behind from the other side, from opposite of how things work. And I don't know. Um, I've thanked a lot of people for their little influences this year because I tried stepping things up. I don't really want to talk about myself too much, but I don't feel like I did them. I feel like I kind of copied them, but the first thing I hear from my sister when I visit visitors, thanks for giving her a good summer. And I got, in that respect, I got lucky, you know? So the cautionary tale is step it up for your loved ones, I guess, because you never know. That picture on the far right there with the hibiscus in her hair, that was, just on a, she might not be here next time when, and I don't know, I don't know what caused that, but seeing that picture is a little eerie for me, but look at her, she's so happy, <laughs> so happy. And I couldn't be prouder of my year, I couldn't be prouder of my niece, I couldn't be prouder of my family, and thank you.
was a girl. I was yeah. really excited to see another girl. Yeah. Yeah.
Lost boys like me, and lost boys like me. 